Hey up guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Sheffield United. Now I've just got to open with a bit of admin. I just want to explain the sort of schedule situation. Now originally the idea was just a couple of videos a week, but I'm loving this so far, despite my obvious criticisms of certain aspects of the game. But I'm enjoying this so far and I kind of want to do an episode a day pretty much thereabouts. But if you've not been part of my journey in previous saves in the previous year, particularly the last couple of months or so, there is, I do have a bit of a personal situation going on in the background that does occasionally take me away from being able to record and edit and all that jazz. So if I do disappear for a period of time, that's why if you follow me on Twitter, I'm usually up front on that, on that when that does happen. So please go follow me on Twitter. It's at the amazing cheer over there because someone still has the version without the. <sighs> I thought I'd just try and explain that. I am ideally actually aiming at one a day pretty much thereabouts these days. So Maybe for the actual beta period we do that, and maybe it'll scale down in the weeks to come. I don't know. But if I continue loving it the way I am right now, you may end up with a video a day regardless. Also, second thing right now, I just want to show you this. This is, I've already forgotten who did this skin, but it's on FM Scout. And it's basically, it's a skin that's reintroduced the circles, the familiarity circles on the positions. And you can just see how much better it looks just having some kind of visual indicator that a player is in the right place in the actual team sheet part of it. Obviously, you've still got the rollability stars on the right-hand side, which are the only indication normally. It's just nice having some indication. Now, obviously, there was a lot of debate about whether or not the green greenness of the circle mattered that much. But yeah, I think it was Oliver Burke. You can see Oliver Burke in that shadow like a roll, red. It's a red circle, but the background behind it doesn't go red to indicate the player is not in the right place, as it would do if we, say, put him in at right back like that. So it's just nice to have some kind of, an, even if it's just the actual indicator of player of position familiarity, even if it's not role familiarity, that would be nice. If it's just sort of the, you know, the red to green on whether or not the player can play in this position, that would be nice. The problem with this skin though is it has a horrendous player page, so I'm not going to be using it. Sorry, but this is just better. But now you can see without that, I've got no indication that Burke is out of position, other than, of course, the star rating over here. We played four games since we last met, and I lost to Fulham immediately after the Carabao Cup victory on penalties against Spurs last time out. Yeah, lost immediately to Fulham. So I've been seeing a lot of talk about maybe this beta in particular being a little bit easier than previous FMs in terms of how well you do in general. The fact that I lost to Fulham made me immediately think, hmm, maybe not. Considering we've lost to Leeds and we've lost to Fulham, two of the promoted sides, I thought, hang on, I think we might be all right here in terms of results in general and accuracy in those results. Then we did beat Wolves at home, fair enough, 2-1, in part to an own goal. Then we smashed Newcastle, 6-1, Nakajima scored in the first minute. He's, he's turned up now, we scored two goals in first half injury time. And because of that many goals, I actually have to open up the match preview. This irritates me every single time, but yeah, we did score six goals from an XG of 2.5-ish. I'm in Bernie, Evian, and Osborne in the 94th minute. We did lose Mousset in that one though, and Ryan Brewster it at the double though, filling straight in for Mousset dispatch Brighton away from home. First away victory, which at this early stage of the season does leave us in fourth with seven games played. The only team that can go ahead of us now are the team that we play, which is Arsenal. And that's followed up with a trip to Chelsea. So all London today. I am going to try and squeeze in two games. Nothing else of note to mention. I'm probably on the wrong formation for this match, but sod it, the attacking formations works better if I'm honest. I even played it against Brighton away from home, and obviously you saw that one was a victory 2-1. And honestly, not really seeing much need to change the formation or players involved in it. So Ramsdale in goal, Stevens on the left. Actually, I might need to rest him. I think I need to rest into Stevens. I remember there being a message saying I need to rest him, but I, I kind of decided I need him for the way match. But Ben Osborne is equally as good at left back, apparently, so we will pop him in there for the time being. Egan Basham Smith in that back line, Gagliardini, Fleck, Nakajima, McBurney in a shadow striker role, Evian on the right, and Brewster up front. Bench, as you probably expect, although McGoldrick maybe shouldn't be there. Nope, I remember why he's there. It's because Mousset's injured, isn't it? Curious lineup from Arsenal here. I was going to say that doesn't feel full strength, but at the same time, their bench hasn't got those key players. I'm noticing lack of a Bamiyang. I'm noticing, well, the fact they're playing Pepe and William, traditionally both right sided. Kalajanic the left back instead of Tierney, no Tierney at all. They still have a Bamiyang, so I can only presume this is injury based. Kieran Tierney's injured, as is a Bamiyang, yes. So both of them are out. Cedric straight up just not registered. By the way, any Arsenal fans, can you please explain to me what happened with Socrates? Because I thought he was regarded as one of your best defenders, and then the last two seasons, 
seem seemingly practically exiled. By the way, I have learned that individuals highlights everyone automatically, so saves you clicking on each section if you want to do the same thing for all of them. Anyway, Bellerin is going to give this to Giacomo. Bunny's going to nick it off him, though, and there is a lot of space on this right-hand side, although it's Bruce the one to get on the end of that, and he smacked it the Leno. Following corner. Interestingly, I've noticed something immediately in this year's game is the short option. They don't seem to automatically cover the short option anymore. This how it hasn't actually ended. Nakajima's got an option to give it to Gagliadini. McBurney's in enough space, although he's lost that space. Evian's going to kick it at the defender, and I think that will do that. Unless the break is on, which it is. Bellerin's the one to take over here. He's hmm, not sure what the defender's done there. My camera zoomed out for whatever reason. Apologies for the previous highlight being so zoomed out. I don't know what happened there. Nakajima will find Gagliadini, and it's gone all the way back to the goalkeeper. I don't like this. It's chipped almost to McBurney there. Nakajima will try to feed through someone. No, he won't. Just charges straight in and goal himself. And that's a brilliant move. Should have had a goal, really. Although I think he took that on his weak foot. Looked like he hit that. Look, just going to pause this here. Because this was one of the main exploits, really, with FM20, I feel like, on the corners, is normally this player here would be there, which meant one of these two players, typically, either that one or that one, would be able to nip into this space here and just get the header straight in and goal. That's a mess of arrows now, but you get the idea. So I'm intrigued to see how it works on this year's engine, because if all the, all, if, if all the defenders are in the box, rather than one of them covering the short option, you're probably going to see less headers going in from corners because they're actually marking the defenders properly now. I don't, I was about to say, I don't like this, but Adam Smith would be one of the best clearances I've ever bloody seen. Over his shoulder, smacks it right into the danger if anyone had been prepared for it. And frankly, nobody was because it was an insane clearance. Osborne gets in the way of that one, but Bernie now, finally the ball's on the ground again. Bruce has been played nicely through there and Leno saves. All of Arsenal's attacks seemingly gone down this side. As soon as I say that, they change it. Of course they do. I'm debating on whether or not I actually just prefer this view. So far, going attacking, well not going attacking, but going with the attacking formation, yes, they're clearly connecting very well, but going with the attacking formation has given us the edge in this one. Uh, point finger? Am I going crazy or do we just not have things that are going well but they could be going even better anymore? Is that just vanished entirely from the options? I'll be completely honest here. The gesture thing, I'm already over it. The novelty's worn off. I would just prefer that to have the actual, the actual words, assertive, cautious, etc. Like thrash arms is aggressive, point finger is assertive. I'm over it. I'm over them being gestures. I'd rather them just be the demeanour again. It's just one of those unnecessary changes. I now realise we should have made things slightly less clear what you're actually doing. Not a big deal because I've already learned what they are. See, the problem is I prefer it during the highlights to have this bar at the bottom because then I can still see things. But when the highlights aren't on, I want the bar down so I can see more information. Bellerin's clean through. Terrible shot. Because if I change the Arsenal stats, for instance, for my own formation, that will show me yellow cards and everything a little bit clearer, in my opinion. And, and injuries, I think. I don't know if injuries pop onto these formations. Because frankly, I have no idea where the injuries do appear. Also, frustratingly, on the actual list of players version on, on that tablet, it doesn't save whatever you were on last. It always reverts to the main page. That might be a bug, I don't know. Adam Smith is... I don't know what's happened here, but McBurney's put it in. But I feel like we're centering on the referee here. Someone is offside. Arteta's praising their team. He's been called back for offside, and am I going to need to get the pen out again here? No, he is very clearly offside. Here, because you can change what... You can change what the... You, you can change what stat you're looking at on for your side or their side. Don't know what's going on here, by the way. This three sets of Burnley Man United. So ideally, you kind of want to have that on body language because otherwise you have no idea what your shouts are doing because it doesn't appear anywhere else. But as soon as you start a new game, you're back on general info again and, and you have to remember to do this every time. I would like that to remember whatever you were on last. Just a minor thing. I think John Fleck needs to come off, by the way. He seemed more tired on the previous page. No what's coming on anyway. McGold is coming on for the increasingly tired McBurney. Evian getting a bit tired now. We do have a free kick here after I've demanded more. Osborne standing over it. Not sure how good he is, but must be good enough to be taking it. Uh, that It's gone in. It's gone in. Okay, well, he's good, at, he's good at free kicks. Ben Osborne is apparently good at free kicks. Not sure what the celebration was. We'll, we'll just move past that, shall we? That is... I mean, mm, I mean, it's a great whip on the free kick there, but it, it didn't seem great from Leno. Now, I appear to not put the right-sided player on the bench for that, so that's a bit awkward. 
Yeah, Nakajima is right-footed. I'll move Nakajima over and bring Gordon on the left. That's the easiest way to fix that, I think. Gagliardini is quite tired too now, but... Lay three, and I was actually going to switch to attacking if we hadn't just scored that. That, I don't know what's just happened. Graham Scott's going to the VAR stand. It's about nine miles away, so brace yourselves. Actually, you don't need to brace yourselves. I can just cut the gap. And a penalty has been awarded. There we go. Ryan Brewster will take it, apparently. Our new number nine. Sorry to loyal blades. I feel like in-game penalties are being saved all the time. Hello, they're actually marking the short option here. Interesting. So after what I said earlier, so there is actually a loose player in the middle of the box there. It's Ryan Brewster, and he gets on the end of it. Probably offside involved somewhere on that, in that, but you saw there, with one player being pulled out, Brewster had all the time in the world. So two offside goals, one of them definitely offside. We'll see how this one is, but I am going to pause it right. Um, sorry, who's offside? Basham. Basham, right, I've lost the lines. I've gone into this more depth, but Basham is this player over here. Was he involved in that in any way, shape or form? I've still got the circle on. It's, no, Chris Basham was not involved in that move at all. We've been robbed of a goal there. doesn't matter. We're still winning. Don't know if that was a bug because that player was no way. It wasn't even like the line of the side of the goalkeeper, which is normally the wrong offside decision that happens. He was nowhere near the play at all at any point. I mean, good win, obviously. Oh God, there's an international break. Well, we're third. Basham and Oswald make team of the week, despite the fact that Basham was wrongly ruled out for offside. <sighs> Some justice, I suppose. Harrison Reed, amusingly, in this lineup as well. The other amazing utility player, although he doesn't have as many positions in this year's game, seemingly. Like, he's not great in general. Actually, I think he's slightly, I think he might actually be slightly better than Osborne overall. Yeah, more, more 14s and, you know, the 17s down here. But I've had Harrison Reed previously as well, and he, can pl he could play in that game in that version, pretty much everywhere. So at this point in the year, I've sent all my scouts out to look at players whose contacts up at the end of the year, because of course they all become signable in January. So just let them all know that we're interested. Does include Messi, admittedly. I just selected everyone. We're not going Messi. Let's be real here. I'm not going to pretend though. Donnarumma. I know he's available at the end of the year. I doubt he's going to want to come here and I doubt we'll be able to afford his wages, but dare to dream. Oliver Burney wants a new contract. He signed last year for Christ's sake. He's on 20 grand a week. Mate, my contract is no longer appropriate for a player of my current standing, and I want to talk about a new deal. His agent's furious. Can we sack him? Where's that option? Actually, that's a good point. Why can't we tell him to get rid of his agent? End of the season, mate. Interesting opposition report for Chelsea here. They are aggressive and wasteful, apparently. Meanwhile, we are aggressive and clinical. But defensively, it's the other way around as well. They are on the impenetrable side, and we're on the leaky side. Both on the quiet side of the graph, though. Just about, Chelsea-wise. Oh, completely forgot to mention, Sander Burge is injured. Gagliardini just picked, picked one up in the international break, but he'll be fine. Also, Mousset should be back. Mousset, Mousse, I'll pick one eventually. So we appear to be the late kickoff. See, curiously, curiously, this is the one I feel like is going to test the concept of using the attacking formation away from home as well. Because away from home, I've, I've, I've used the defensive formation up until the Brighton match, which we won. And we, lost, and we drew against Burnley, we bowled it against Burnley, let's be honest, we, we bowled it against Leeds and we lost to Fulham as well. So I'm starting to think the DM version isn't good. So a few changes for the actual Chelsea match, and Stevens is going to come back in at left back after having a rest for a game. Norwood comes into the midfield instead of Fleck, he's actually a better Mazzala than Fleck, I don't know why Fleck was playing the last time out. I think I had to rest him, I think he might have been injured the previous match and I just forgot to put him back in. And Musette comes back in. Also, part of Ben Osborne's dropping here is because he's upset with my treatment of Ollie McBurney. Although he did respond well to me telling him he didn't train very well. Ben Osborne, make your mind up. Mousset was part of that angry lot as well. He went to sorry as his mood after I dealt with that. So thank you. Thank you, Mousset, for that. Thank you. So this is really the big test of this formation, though, because on paper, it's too aggressive. So the game obviously prefers Kepper to Mendy here. Tammy to... Tammy over Werner is curious. Mason Mount missing entirely, must be injured. Game clearly doesn't rate him the same way Frank does. Oh, he is four and a half stars, though. One of those tunnel questions has just made me realise I think I may have overlooked Jack O'Connell being back as well. Basham with a long throw. Goes straight to Kepper. But no long throws aren't overpowered. Kepper punts that one ridiculously well. And Zayech intercepts the clearance. Abraham charging round. Goalkeeper does nothing. Maybe that's why Tammy's starting in. Werner isn't. This, though, is... A, terrible fending, and B, terrible goalkeeping. What are you doing, Aaron, mate? What are you doing? You starting to be overrated in-game as well. Ramsdale to Steven. It feels like a high press from Chelsea here. Basham, 
Maybe actually having the defensive midfielder wouldn't have been a bad idea here. Well, I mean, that's got really very little to do with the formation, that one. That's just Kovacic punting it very hard towards the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper, again, being rubbish. Yeah, obviously a defensive midfielder might have filled that gap, though, but again, the goalkeeper, what are you doing? You do know you are capable of lateral movement, right? You don't just have to move up and down. You can go side to side. Anyway, Musa, if we can try and salvage something out of this game. Smith has gone on the overlap as instructed. Smith has got past everyone. That's going to get nicked in and straight to Kepa. I say that was a bit of a weak shot, actually, and I'm kind of concerned now because that's got to Kante. And Abraham has gone, just walked around his defender again, and he just kicked in exactly the same spot. And Aaron Ramsdale has fallen to his knees again. Is this a bug? Like, it is a beta period. Is this a bug? Genuinely, is this a bug? Because I'm pretty certain the match engine is broken because my goalkeeper is incapable of moving sideways. So do we want to try this again, maybe? Evian might collect that. Oh, nice little chest down. I feel like he didn't see a lot of chest downs in previous games. Rubbish cross in, though. Crosh Havertz now is just going to whack it towards the goal. I mean, the goalkeeper didn't move again. I'm, I am I am somewhat concerned that the game is broken. As for the credit playing right back is a little bit interesting because I feel like they do tend to prefer Rhys James in this game. Ramsdale hoofs one forward. Moussa is going to get on the end of it, though. And there are four Sheffield United players here. McBurney with the night. Oh, he's hit the post. Evian quite, can't quite get on the rebound. Still pressing them fairly high, though. Yeah, they have scored three goals from a 0.74 XG. It's not great and does indicate that our goalkeeper has been somewhat useless. I mean, if this gets to 4-0 at half-time, I might just write off the second half. Thankfully, Abraham has kicked that about an entire goal width wide. Worst part of this is you'd probably argue, I mean, 1-0 at half-time. I thought I'd just test the throwing water bottle. Yes, it did, did demotivate the team. I, I had heard that it may, might work if you are being trashed. But apparently 3-0 is still not enough of a margin to get a reaction out of throwing the water bottle. Also, Oliver Burney's coming off. Also, Lisa Moussette now as well, so that's good news. Nakajima's on a 5.9 somehow. Sorry, how is... what? what? Like, gen genuinely, what has Nakajima done to deserve a 5.9 in this game? He's not Mr. Penalty or anything like that. They're normally tanks are rating. You generally don't tend to see 5.9s except from goalkeepers who have let in like 5 goals or something. Ramsdale, meanwhile, in a 6.5. On comes Gordon. Marcus Alonso has ended up as a right winger here. Now he's back in centre mid. Now he's on the left wing. Is there anything Marcus Alonso can't do? So you're all in training tomorrow, lads? That was absolutely abject. Meanwhile, as soon as I finish the game, the press is saying, well done, you've done very well. Which in fairness we have. <laughs> I wish I could add to one of these about this question about Kovacic's goal saying the goalkeeper was pathetic. But for some reason, you can't add comments to this lot. Stevens is a little jaded again. I think the next. I don't think the next match is as dangerous because it's Leicester and they are once again underrated in the game despite being licensed. Yeah, they're seventeenth, still fourth, predicted sixteenth. In terms of what I'm going to bring you next, I think Everton and Southampton might be the shout. Depending on how long this episode ends up being, I might just switch to one game episodes. I feel like the match day package these days is a little bit longer, but Everton Southampton is what I'm aiming at. I'm just. I, I'm just. Not feeling the money and I double hand, I feel like it's a little bit too close to where we are currently. And of course, if I do one of these matches just before the January transfer window, it gives you guys an opportunity to suggest players that I might be able to sign. Obviously, the Leeds game in the future is somewhere on my radar too. But I'll see you for Everton and or Southampton next time out. Until then, ta -ra. What are you doing, Aaron Ramsdale?